hot and techy breath out the city bed as you wait. All right, time for round two of fixtures in IPL 2024. What an opening weekend. We've had a number of storylines, lots of drama, a couple of thrillers. We're still recovering from how the Mumbai Indians managed to lose it against the Gujarat Titans. But what it meant was that in the opening five games, we've seen five home wins enter the Chinnaswamy Stadium. And the Royal Challengers Bangalore are looking for their first win. In fact, let's start over. The Royal Challengers Bengaluru are now looking for their first win. And the Punjab Kings are quite excited after picking up their first points too. The Chinnaswamy Stadium has a lot of stories that it tends to offer in this tournament. So on Maruti Suzuki Arena presents ESPN Rigan for timeout. Very festive day in our part of the world. It's a very happy holy to our panel. Wasim, Mitch, Tom is the only one who's actually partaken in celebrations. I was too lazy. Wasim and Mitch are professionals. They had to get to work. <laughs> You've had a nice day out, haven't you? I have. And I'm embracing the occasion. And uh, happy holy to everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And to all our viewers out there. Yeah. I need to go back to that couch picture because look at Tom Moody's socks. <laughs> <laughs> he is the go. most organised packer of all time. He's got the matching top and the matching <laughs> socks. I love it. Let's compare that now. You've worn green. and I've actually forgot my socks today, so that's uh, not a good start. Please put that down. Sorry. Let's let me start, take my let's shoes start off. Over. But Sim, it's okay. I can see I don't. Uh, you must have worn those inner socks. Yeah, know. I did. Okay. This is not about socks. This is about runs. Uh, very happy only to all our views, of course. <coughs> but we focus on uh, RCB against uh, PBKS, where the toss has been won by the home team. So, Faf Duplessy, unlike what he did, at the uh, Chepok on Friday evening, has decided he's going to have a bowl first. And maybe that's the first note that was written in Andy Flaher's RCB coach's diary. Faf, win the toss, bowl. Yeah, look, maybe it was an agreed approach in that first game because you look at the stats, it is the right decision, you know, which is what RCB did in Chennai um, and, uh, and bat first. But I think... Looking at their side, they need mm. to bat second because their strength is their batting. And that's a big toss to win because uh, you can guarantee that uh, Punjab would have been very mm. keen to do the same. Yeah, well, they're going to have to bat first on this occasion. Punjab, they saw their way over the line against the Delhi Capitals in a chase. But at the Chinnaswamy, you expect your big guns to fire. It's the place to hit sixes. And our focus today is going to be on the two middle-order big hitters. Glenn Maxwell missed out of the Chepok. Liam Livingston, though showed us that uh, he could be back to his best at uh, Mulanpur after having a quiet season last year. That's what we've got on display today, folks. A strike rate of over 200 for both Maxi and Livingston between uh, over 16 to 20. So if they bat any length of time, this should be fun. Average in the over 7 to 15, Livingston. That's seriously good numbers. I guess the first thing is how the batters like these think when they go to the Chinnaswamy, a ground where they're almost expected to score big. Wasim? Well, first of all, I feel uh, both of them bat at different position. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Maxwell bats at number four. Uh, now, this season, uh, Liam Livingston is going to bat at six. So, he's somebody who's been classed as a finisher for Punjab Kings. But I feel they both obviously play a very important role. Uh, you know, uh, you back yourself. Uh, your ball striking on this ground and you know uh, half a hit is going to go for sixes. Uh, So, I mean, they are seriously, you know, power hitters. So, if they come good, like you said, you know, bat any good length of time, you are in for an entertainment. You've worked with Liam Livingston. I mean, do batters come slight thinking only differently when they go to the Chinnaswamy? Does the way they usually construct their innings change, knowing that this ground... No, I don't think so. I mean, whatever the... You know, the conversation, obviously you know that it's going to be a good batting pitch. Uh, it's a high scoring ground, but I don't think they prepare anything differently. All they think is if it's in their zone, they'll probably back themselves uh, because they know it's going to go. Any Anything in their area, mm. uh, they can back themselves. Maxwell gets a first ball duck in the last game. Mm-hmm. That almost plays into this one for a player who, I say it nicely, but is very much an ego player. Likes to miss, to cash in after he's just missed out. Yeah, he does. He He's a player who uh, our poor performance doesn't all the time doesn't affect him as much as you'd expect. He's, he seems to be able to just move on from those moments. And um, As long as he's left to himself and his own devices, he'll, he'll come back quickly. The, the concern for me and the way Max will play, and I know I'm a, a bowler talking about this, but uh, for when I'm seeing him bat quite often early in his innings, he's opening the face, which he got out to the other day, and it's 
it's a common trend from last year's IPL where he opened the face quite a bit early in his innings trying to beat third man. I don't know if subconsciously doing it, uh, but it's something that I've found has crept into his game over the last year or so. Mm. Yeah, I, look, Maxwell, I, I think, has cracked the, the, the code of IPL. Um, you know, there was a, a real mystery around Maxwell for a number of years in the IPL and, you know, he underperformed to what he potentially is capable of. For, but ever since he's gone to RCB, uh, he, he's been exactly what we expect Maxwell to be, and that is that dynamic player, and those numbers reflect that. Um, the point you make is that, yeah, possibly that is something that's crept in. He's just conscious of, you know, getting off strike. I don't think he's trying to beat third man and keeper mm. to get a four. I think that's more of a, you know, I'm, I'm off strike type approach. But, uh, you know, that, that duck the other night is not going to, bother Maxwell at all, you know, he can guarantee he'll probably hit the first ball for six tonight. Who do you rather bowl to between the two? Well, geez, me personally, uh, probably prefer to bowl to Livingston. Why? Uh, Max has taken me down a few times, <laughs> so got good personal experience there. Uh, look, he's, he's a guy who, like, he, you know, like the other night, he can get out first ball, but if he gets in and you, you end up bowling to him when he's already set, he's very, very difficult to bowl to, and uh, I ran into him at Indoor which is a notoriously great batting ground. And, and he just seems to grow an extra two inches when he's on small grounds like that with good wickets. And I think that's part, partly why he's so successful at RCB. You know, he spent all that time at Kings uh, where the wicket wasn't as consistent, a little bit bigger boundaries, uh, a little bit lower bounce. So I think the surface, he's, a really, he's the ideal player for RCB. Mm. Who's going to have the bigger impact today? Maxwell Livingston. Livingston batting first, of course. I think it all depends on the top order, how long uh, the Punjab batting order bats. Uh, if he's going to come in at number six. By top order, you include Sam Curran in that top yeah, order now, yeah. who's the number four batter. So if, if those guys bat, I'm sure Livingston will get to bat. Uh, but I feel he'll have an impact in the last five overs. You'll expect Maxwell to have, now that Punjab is batting first, you expect for RCB to chase down. Maxwell needs to have a greater impact. Just on that point though, I mean, it worked for them the first game. So, do we expect it to not go away? Is that the kind of experiment you're wary has worked in game one for Punjab? Do you still see a Sam Curran coming in at number four in an unchanged Punjab team? I think so. I think uh, I'd be very surprised if it's changed. They obviously feel that they need that uh, anchor type role in the middle around their power hitters and the instruction with the players around Sam Curran will be, you know, the, I want you to you know, play that positive brand and, and uh, Sam Curran can play around that. And uh, I thought he did it perfectly in that first mm. game. Um, you know, so, you know, it, it may have to be a little bit more aggressive at this venue because, you know, a strike rate of 130 is mm. it's not going to be enough at this venue. You, you're going to have to, once you get in, after your first okay. 10 balls, you need to be going above 150. OK, let's just confirm teams for you then. Both teams say they're unchanged. Now, they have a different role here, so they have to name a batting first 11 do the Punjab Kings and a bowling first 11 do RCB. But let's just look at that team for you, uh, home team, uh, first up. And Yash Dayal is the preferred bowling option. We're wondering whether that was something that they could have kept open, whether they go for Akash Deep or whether they go for uh, Vaishak Vijay Kumar. As it turns out, it is very much the same team that went down uh, at the Chepok. So Dayal still keeps his place. Ahead of Vishak, who I thought was very good, and Akash Deep was impressive during the tests. Dayal's the man to start for them, was he? Yeah, I mean, they probably don't want to change too much after one game. So they'll probably give him, you know, more game time. Uh, understandable. Uh, I think Suyash Prabhu Desai is probably the one who's going to come and bat in the second half. Uh, now let's look at that one more time and just we recall who their options could be there for. Right, that's interesting though because this is their. Yeah. Bowling but first 11. Everybody else looks like a bowler. Swapnil mm. Singh is the other one. So the only batter I see is Prabhu Desai. So batting second, probably he'll come in. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they've taken the leg spinner out and put in another seamer purely because it, it's, it doesn't favor uh, the spinner at this venue. And probably Karan Sharma didn't have the best first game. Mm. So it does make sense. Yeah, that's the player we're missing out on. I was trying to see who they've left. But mm. Karan Sharma is not in the bowling first level. So that's actually not the same team. No, it's not. Even though Faf said it. Yeah, Yeah. well, it's not the first captain to actually get it <laughs> wrong at the toss. It's always hard to remember <laughs> the changes, particularly when you've got a few. But that's only just the one change. And that makes perfect sense. Yeah. You know, it's a different venue. 
And just to, to Wazzy's point, just early in the tournament, from a coach's perspective, one thing you don't want to do is have too many moving parts. You want to try to show that sort of solidarity around selection unless there's an obvious tactical move in your mm. playing 11 mm. with a change of venue, you know, mm. turning surface or a seaming surface or a swing, swinging conditions or a small ground where you can't mm. really host two spinners or three spinners if you include Maxwell. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, right? The, it was the end of that RCB chat. I think we were discussing, you were talking about them letting go of Hasaranga and, mm. and before that Chehel and now we've reached a point where just they don't have a leg spinner and they're happy with that. They're just going to yeah. have to play 20 overs of bowling at the Chinnaswamy without a specialist leg spinner. I think with their, with their lineup as well, I think what we learned from that is that the other night we we're having conversations about um, did Dale play because Mustafa Zur bowled so well, um, but it's clear that this has got Andy Flowers' blueprint all over it. Mm. Um, he's always liked to pick players like David Willey in the past, um, and this is a, a key component of how he likes to structure his side. So he's trying to be inconsistent as... Uh, in his method of what's made him successful at other tournaments yeah. and try to bring that blueprint into RCB. Okay, Punjab Kings, let's have a look. They have said they are unchanged. Let's just confirm that after looking at the team. This is the batting first team, so will we continue to see Sam Curran at number four? You can almost expect it. And as we run through the rest of that side, yep, it is the same. Shashank Singh has, uh, has been given the faith and he will keep his place for now. We expect Arshdeep to come in in the second innings when they have to have uh, a bowl. No surprises? Was no him surprise. or would you have looked at that Shashank Singh Hatpit Brar position? No. no, I think Shashank Singh is a better batsman uh, compared to Harpreet Brar. Uh, and yeah, probably Prab Simran will go out in the second half and Ashdeep will come in uh, and it's uh, very logical. Yeah. Okay, the thing about uh, coming to the Chinnaswami, it's one thing you're expecting a run fest and we are expecting it today. Uh, but we're also going to have focus on the bowlers. We've got someone who's had the real privilege over several years of bowling at the Chinnaswamy, mm. and we bring out some of the key death bowlers in this game. There's Arshdeep Singh and there's Harshal Patel who's returning to RCB who let go of him for big money, remember. Uh, Arshdeep with an economy of 9 at the death and a strike rate of just under 12 and Harshal Patel somehow did not crack the Chinnaswamy code. At 9, I wonder if a bowler would say, I've actually done well over there. Take me through your experiences as well of uh, bowling at the Chinnaswamy and what it taught you on how to bowl there in district runs. Yeah, Chinnaswamy's a difficult one. I felt like you could make inroads at the top. There was usually a, a little bit of movement, depending on what the surface was. Um, they changed the wicket at one point, and, and the moisture was all out of it, and that was an easier year to bowl where you could just bowl cutters. But uh, in terms of those numbers that we just saw there, like yeah, it's hard to compare because you do play at different grounds. Um, but anything at the, at the death under 10, we were t talking off there, Tom and I are saying that, well, if your 19th over is being bowled and, and your bowler goes for less than 10, uh, you're actually really happy. So, I mean, so those numbers from us deep are, are exceptional, in my opinion, um, at the death to be going at nines. And from Harshal's point of view, it's very, very difficult to bowl at Chinnaswamy. It is tough. Any mishits uh, do go the distance. And, and because of the style of death bowler he is, uh, if he gets it wrong, um, it's accentuated even more um, and he can have those games where those last couple overs go for 20, uh, 18, 20, which skews those numbers. Actually, bowled just the one over the death, I think, in the last game against Delhi. Harshal bowled quite a bit more. Are you surprised seeing that? Is he going to have a different role to play today? Oh, I think the death over is going to be critical. Um, you know, the back 10 overs at venues like this are very, very important. Obviously, the power play is important and normally the blueprint in the power play at this venue is forget about what you're going for, concentrate on what you can take, and that is wickets. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, even if you go for, you know, 10, 12 and over in the power play, that's fine. But if we have three of them in the bag, mm -hmm. we'll take that. Okay. So the focus is not so much on trying to be defensive in the power play overs. The focus is let's take wickets. Yeah. And if that means the two bouncer rule is going to come into play a little bit more, you know, in the power play at this venue, it'll be interesting to see how teams approach it because that generally is, uh, you know, a blueprint at that venue. You provoked a nice chat here because we're also going to focus now on Siraj and Alzari Joseph, two other important bowlers, both in RCB colours this year. And Alzari Joseph was greeted to this year's IPL with a six of Rachin Ravindran in the last game. And an economy of 10.5 last year when he was playing for the Titans, he eventually even lost his place, did Alzari Joseph. 
and now he is going to bowl at perhaps the most challenging ground the two bouncer rule now does it is it a is it something that can work in favor of the bowlers at a ground like this because we've already seen it could go either way yeah this is a tough one um i think at this top, this ground you have to have a good slow ball bouncer um to to use um i think if you're going to use your fast bouncer you're trying to use it earlier in the over as a wicket option and try catch uh the batters by surprise but the most effective delivery here at Timisoma is actually hitting the wide corners so hitting your wide line, Yorker, or making sure you're well inside um, the heel and almost bowling a Yorker down leg. Anything from uh, middle middle to six stump, an attempted Yorker seems to disappear here. So you've got to try and stay out of that laneway. That's interesting. I've heard at these surfaces sometimes you don't leave the stumps. I've heard bowlers say that as well when it's so flat. Yeah, I, I think I think that mentality looks really good when it comes off. But I, I'd love to see the numbers <laughs> on the amount of time because we we look at it right and we go like a your perfect Yorker is an ex executed Yorker looks great right but you have those off days and you're trying to bowl lane well, lane way and you and you end up bowling half volleys that loses your game any over over sixteen like can lose your game at that point and you're trying to bowl to the to the percentages and and try and make sure that you you're trying that if you do miss that you get hit to your fielders which you can't do if you're if you're bowling at the stumps. Yeah, that's a ball you said Harshal Patel has actually stopped bowling. Didn't you have seen this? Yeah. It's the seam up Yorker. The slower Yorker sometimes is predictable now, which says that the slower bouncer is a handy ball. Now, Harshal still didn't crack the code hmm. to bowling at this ground. What would you want to see Harshal Patel use today? I mean, the, the ball that used to work really well for him was that loopy uh, kind of delivery uh, where he picked up wickets, you know, he used to. Uh, Fool a lot of batsmen when he picked up five wickets or even hat tricks uh, for that matter. Uh, that delivery actually disappeared in his armory, uh, and I feel that Yorker. So, so sometimes I feel he's, he's very predictable. He gets hit a lot of square uh, on the boundaries, uh, and batters are waiting for that delivery. So he needs to, you know, bring a little bit of variation where a wide Yorker or a normal Yorker, uh, some those kind of deliveries getting hit. Even if he gets it, getting hit into the different direction, you know, mm. sometimes he just gets hit yeah. to a short, slower delivery, yeah. which, which the batsmen are expecting. So, so the balls he was bowling the other the other night, he was bowling too close to the stumps. He's allowing it just to get into the arc of the batter. Mm. If he just moved those back of a length slower balls uh, a couple of feet wider, and he was out on that wide line, it would bring percentages into play a lot more. You get a lot more toes, a lot more cuts, which have less power on them. Um, the interesting one you brought up the other night is. That when he was bowling those full slower ones, that the uh, he started bowling some waist high full tosses. Yeah. So in the past, so that's probably why he's taken it out of his game. I've just worked with um, a guy Jordan Thompson in the ILT20 who had the same issue with his split finger, and we started working on him bowling from behind the stumps, not changing anything else other than where he bowled the delivery from. Interesting. And it was really really effective from that point. So nothing changes other than the delivery point. Yeah. You see a lot of spinners do it. A lot of spinners will change their variation by where they bowl in the crease. It might be as simple a fix as that for Harshal if he wants to bring that back into the game. Is it, is it something as, as, is it as simple as it sounds though? Fast bowler to suddenly it's, release from Yeah, the it's game. a lot easier than you would expect. Um, it's it's Tom's, something you Tom's have to practice. You it's something you have yeah. to practice. You definitely have mm. to practice. Um, but it's a, it's a very good ball and it's not top of mind for, for people who miss uh, those balls. And it was something I had to do as well when I was trying to bowl certain types of deliveries mm. at, at points so so my whole armory was available to me mm. you know, I, I just think with Hush, my opinion is with with his bowling at the moment is that everyone's seen over the last few years exactly what's worked for him and they've made that adjustment so now they're playing him like he's bowling every ball as a slower ball so they're getting set at the crease mm. that every ball's a slower ball so they're in a great position so their swing path is an in timing for the slower ball where he's done people in the past is where they've set themselves for the normal pace delivery and then the, suddenly the slower ball comes and so their swing path is out of sync. So we normally liken him to Bravo and I'm digressing a yeah. little bit. It's how the same was thing. Bravo so, was he not more successful for longer, Dwayne yeah, Bravo? Yeah, but, but what did he but Bravo, Bravo's, um, I would say his slower ball, his Yorker and his bouncer are far superior. Mm -hmm. had, Simple had as that. Variations and more variations. Yeah. Yeah, he, Bravo bowled wide of the crease, over the wicket, Wide of the, the crease, wicket. round the wicket. He 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 kept you guessing. His mm. point, his his yeah. release point was 
different every single ball. That takes me to what you said yesterday, right? That he's not evolved Harshal as much as you would have liked. But yeah. Bravo kept evolving. Always. Yeah. And, he, and he's been in the game longer than anyone. You know, and he's played more T20 games. He was slower compared to Harshal. Yeah. And even more effective in that match. Yeah, his, his slower ball yeah. is nearly around 110. He's got, he's got a number of different slower balls, but one of them's down nearly at spinner's pace. Yeah. There are times you did beat batters for pace too. Yeah. Bravo. Well, and again, you look at the clock and it's not like it's 150, yeah. but because yeah. it's come from 110 mm-hmm. to late 130s, that it, 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 it is a real rush. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, fascinating. Uh, we, we, we've dedicated a lot of time on bowlers ahead of a Chinnaswamy game. Let's hope that they have uh, something to cheer about today at a ground which otherwise has had very little uh, for fast bowlers. Uh, Simon Katic, just at the start of this game, said there's a bit of grass on the surface uh, and therefore I expect it to do all sorts of things, right? And be a nightmare to bat on. But he's called it an absolute belter. So we wait to see what we get. Uh, and now it is time for a fun segment that's been building. You know what's coming up, gentlemen? We enter the impact zone. <laughs> Now, we remind you, if you've missed uh, what we're doing over the weekend, catch up because this is going to be fun. It's already getting a bit spicy. Each expert on the panel picks three players ahead of each game. And uh, the impact points as per ESPN to for smart stats are then attributed to that player. And that's, of course, a much better way to assess the uh, impact of a player than conventional numbers. And the expert with the highest points tally for each match gets the three points in the bag in their season tally. And we also have a number of other things. We're playing with our guests, quizzes and debunking myths and valuing their predictions. So they're playing for plenty. Mm. Well, I, I think we need a bit of added motivation. Maybe <laughs> one of these beautiful Suzukis. Uh, oh. Maybe we could How get one of those put on the line. How do you plan on taking that back to Auckland? Uh, put a couple of canoes on the wheels. <laughs> oh, sweet. Yeah, we'll figure it out. All right. I'm, I think they've, they've got a pretty big market in your part of the world as well. Mm. Anyway, it's time for the Impact Zone. It's time to pick... <laughs> Uh, three players from this game. You all have seen the lineups. I'll bring them up for you again. I believe Wasim Jafar is going to start yeah, as a yeah. result of missing out game. yesterday. Yes, Wasim, your first pick. I'm going to go with Kohli. Okay, we're starting with batters in yeah. that case, and I will leave, leave the third round as a I'll, I'll let Tom go. No, I'll let you go time. because I hate, hate, <laughs> hate, hate, hate this whinging carrying on. <laughs> all right. Uh, the, I'm going to go with Faf Duplessis. Faf and Kohli, the uh, openers. Shikhar Dhawan. And Shikhar Dhawan. Three openers okay. done. Let's go bowlers, and we start with Mitch McClanagan. I'm going to go with Prabhata. Uh, uh, uh. Um, I'm going to go with Ashti. Okay. I'm going to back Harshal. Okay, Rabada, Arshdeep and Harshal. And now, Tom, you can have your wildcard third pick. Maxwell. Okay, Maxwell it is. Wasi. Who is it, me? Uh, I'm going to go Besto. Oh, you want to see the lineup? Might as well go Sam Curran. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, and Wasim, I think the first time you've got your notebook today. No, no, he's I, taking so far, I'm so far <laughs> behind in the game. I, I need to get serious here. He's up all night preparing for this moment. <laughs> Okay, we're going to have some more fun with uh, Tom, Mitch and Wasim, and just remind and try and uh, refresh everyone's cricketing IQ when it comes to the IPL. It's time to play fact or fiction. Again, guys, remember there are points that our army of adjudicators is Mm -hmm. keeping an eye on. So it's pretty straightforward. I will read out a statement and you need to then tell me if said statement is a fact or a fiction. Mm -hmm. All right? Or fiction. All right, let's go. Let's start again. Uh, The first one. In the 2021 season, Harpreet Brar dismissed Kohli, Maxwell and A.B. de Villiers in the same match. Fact. Wasim fact. Jaffer, quick off the block, says fact. Yeah, I'm and fact. that is indeed... They're going to agree. Oh, right. No, no. <laughs> no, he's, no he's, are, we, are we all sort of having a go? At sort of well, saying? only if it's incorrect, but he's already said it. Then. No, it's I only two of us. Yeah, I thought we all had a chance. Was all of us. Who can tell me how they got out? Then maybe we'll know. <laughs> they got out to a left-arm spinner. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, last time was fat. Yeah, yeah we all had it. Yeah, yeah. Quiet, you two. I'm going to give that to Wasim Jafar for giving me the most prompt answer. Yeah, okay. Let's go to our next one. That that did happen. You, some of us might remember it. Harpreet Brad dismissing Kohli, Maxi, and AB. Next one. AB de Villiers is the most fact. number of ducks for Bangalore. Fiction. Mitch McLanagan has thrown out fact. Fiction. Yeah, fiction. It's actually a piece of fiction. Oh. Because the most number of ducks. Who can tell me who has it? Just bonus points. Anyone? Kohli. He's on fire today. Well, he's been up all night to do his work. <laughs> Without Kohli, he looks exhausted. <laughs> it is, it is He's not going to make it to the end of the game. This is two franchises. 
Uh, yeah, it, the, well. These are his franchises. You are right. Yes, Wasim Jafar, the first opening pair of RCB. Uh, right, 10 for Kohli. Next one, Wasim is just smoking it right now. Among all overseas batters to have played for Bangalore, Faf has the highest average. We are qualifying this with a minimum of 10 innings. So, does Faf has the highest average for RCB batters? Fact. Tom Moody says, fact. Fiction. Uh, fact. It's a piece of fiction. Chris uh, Gale. And the correct answer to that, would you guess it? This is a serious uh, bonus point if anyone gets it. Shane Watson. It. It's an Australian, but it's not Watson. Open enough, minimum 10 innings, highest average for Bangalore. Think, think you're on the right... Uh, you're on the right path, Tom. All-rounder who opened the batting, Australian, played at least 10 times. Didn't play a lot, I think. Anyway, I'll give it to you. The answer is Marcus Stoinis. Would you believe it? Yes, he's got a round there. 52.7. Fafu with a very healthy 42.5. Marcus Stoinis. That's good. Anyway, here's the last one. Wasim Jafar is the only former Bangalore player to have been part of Punjab's coaching staff. Fiction. All right, Mitch McLanagan says Yeah, fiction. I'm fiction too. Wasim, what do you say? Former Bangalore player to be part of the Punjab Kings coaching staff. Fact or fiction? I think it's a fiction. Okay. No, no, sorry, fact. You think it's a fact? Yeah. Well, the two of you have got this right. Wasim's got this wrong. Uh, Anil Kumble uh, was also, yeah. of I course, a former RCB. Now, what do you do with that kind of thing? Where your own answer is wrong. But he's done so well on everything else. I, I, would, uh, I would celebrate his performance. <laughs> I think he's been I think he's been outstanding. Yeah. I think this nullifies all his good work. He should get a double yeah, negative yeah, yeah. for not knowing. This is a yeah, this is your big I'm game to get back in the standings as well. So well done. I'm proud of you. All right. Game underway. So let's quickly get three categories of predictions that we'd like from our panel. Oh. One safe, one bold and one outrageous. Right, let's start with the safe pick. Safe pick. You can this could be your score in fact. Yeah. What's he? Safe pick. Safe, uh, Kohli to get 60. Mitch? Safe pick. Uh, Faf to top score. Tom? Um, team total to be above 170. Okay, that's safe indeed. Let's go for a bold pick, Tom. Um, bold pick is Sam Curran to get 100. Whoa. That's right. outrageous. Put that in outrageous as well. Yeah, I thought I'd go outrageous. You know. <laughs> Rabada, 4 for 24. Who was that? Rabada. Rabada, four, 4 for 24. Harpit Bra to get Kohli and Maxwell out again. Oh, okay. And oh, now like outrageous that. Tom's already given us. Yeah, I, I sort of got to mix it. Can I go bold? With yeah, now one? you can give me a bold pick. <laughs> <laughs> Shikha Darwin to get 100. Okay. Hundreds coming. We haven't had 100 yet this season. Yeah. Bear store to get 100. Bear store to get 100. Everyone should get 100 today. Mitch. He's in my team. <laughs> so chic is in mine. Uh, <laughs> uh, Maxwell to get another duck. Okay. We'll uh -huh. leave it there. Well, that's pretty outrageous. Two ducks for Maxi. I like it. Let's leave it there. Wasim, uh, Mitch and Tom, thank you very much. Quick first inning score. Wasim? Uh, 210. 210 Punjab. Wow. Mitch? 198. Tom? 181. 181. I'm going to go 230. <laughs> yeah, just have yeah. some fun. Outrageous. I was going to go 20 plus, whatever the highest was anyway. <laughs> we will see you at the end of the Punjab innings. What promises to be a run fest uh, at the Chinnaswamy on Maruti Suzuki Arena presents ESPN Trick Info Timeout. Download the mobile app if you haven't already and we'll be back with Tom Moody, Mitch McClanagan and Wasim Jaffer at the end of the Punjab Kings innings. Ready?